sure everybody knows that there are refreshments here. Um, and then Charlie, I don't know if you'll speak to the books both here and there as part of your talk, but just sort of clarify what's what, um, if you would. I'll do something here. like okay. that. Uh, oh, let me just, yeah, that looks pretty wide. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you don't remember what I said, you can see it tomorrow on YouTube, if I got my, my ship together. One last go. Um, okay, so um, I need to thank Ann Pierce here, who's been helping me for the last three years. Not only helping me, but collecting my work. Thank you, Ann. And she, she brought my little books, my um, art little books, around to various venues, including Fitz, and, um, and developed a, a dialogue with Aaron, this guy. And um, so I want to thank Aaron, too, because uh, I love this room, and uh, I love the neighborhood. I went to Hutch Tech couple of blocks over there, and uh, the walk across Chippewa in the late 60s, or, no, or mid 60s, was always a fascinating thing. I wish the Washington Market was still there. That would be cool. Okay. Um, how do we have beauty? Um, not being beautiful, but uh, how do we get it? How do we keep it? How do we hold it? How do we deal with beauty. So you just put that in the back of your mind because uh, Clofalonian activism is working toward a cultural ecosystem of production, distribution, and support. And in the case of Clofalonian activism, it's circumscribed by the true, the good, and the beautiful. Okay, uh, simplistic bi binary, um, hard and soft force. I'll give you a little story, kind of in relation to Hodge Tech. When I was a young fellow, I was afraid of the big guys in the school, and so I became kind of interested in weapons. Now, every once in a while, you're reading the newspaper about guns, every once in a while. And I, I get the sensibility because it's like, you know, I, I think it's a pathology that you can become addicted to these tools. Now, okay, that's hard force. Think of it as military. Um, but then there's soft force, uh, culture. And luckily, I was able to make this leap from being afraid to... Uh, being captivated by the wonder of culture, that wonderful soft force, um, we are not all created equal. Maybe I don't understand the syntax of that uh, platitude, but um, I'll never be Tiger Woods or Meryl Streep. Um, back in elementary school, my uh, you know handlers told me I was gifted and that I should do something good with my gifts. Okay, so um, identity happens. It starts, starts to take form. Uh, you know, and there are a lot of kinds of identity. There's uh, personal, national, religious, shared interests, etc. And that all gives meaning to our lives. Uh, frequently, this sort of takes form around institutions. Um, when I was a kid, religion was important to me. And um, <coughs> as I've matured, <laughs> uh, I've uh, shifted my sense of uh, belief and faith and morality and ethics. Um, and I will just point out in relation to the love in the title there that... Uh, it, it, my sense of love comes out of this Christian um, sense of love as forgiveness. Just throwing it out there. Now, um, Oh My Goodness uh, is one of the publications for sale here. And uh, it is also that print at the, on, on the back wall 
and it's from 2010. And it was kind of, it was punctuation on a 40 year, you know, moment in my career. And it was also a way to grapple with uh, the question of religion. So um, my book here will show you, um, I think it's like 20 different um, paintings that reference, you know, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, um, etc. Um, not every religion, because you know it gets kind of complex with some of the you know finer points. But the thing is that um, in between each uh, layer of paint of the paint, the representational paintings, I would sand the surface, and I also um, obsessively photographed the process of the painting, so that you could go to my website right now and find an animation of oh my goodness. Uh, the 3,700 and some images go by in a flipbook type manner. Uh, I, I think it takes 14 minutes. And my sons did the soundtrack, just in case you wonder. Um, and my idea was that I had this kind of economic uh, um, agenda where the, um, the, the download, the, the video would be uh, free. Um, the book would be consumer priced. 50 bucks. Um, the, uh, the print would be collector priced, and I think we're going to sell that for 600 bucks framed. Um, and, um, and then the original is priceless because someday I will gift that to a lucky institution. <laughs> um, so the thing is with this, you know, trying to, trying to deal with how the work exists in the world you know, different forms, video, publication, a different kind of publication, and then the actual. Anyway, that's what this aspect of the book thing is right now. We must be halfway through. Okay, so um, identity, Charles Sidney Clough. When I went to, um, on the internet to figure out what my URL was gonna be, uh, there, there are at least 80 of them, and one of them is a billionaire hedge fund guy in Boston. Another one is a fundamentalist preacher who actually went to MIT, and you, you know, how do you square those two things? <laughs> Another one was a, a wife murderer. <laughs> I thought about it, but anyway. <laughs> um, and, and so I decided I would use C-L-U-F-F-F, -F -F, that's three F's, F as in Frank. <sighs> when I was doing the show uh, where the catalog there for the UV show that Sandra Furman did um, in uh, 2012, 10 years ago, going back and forth from my studio in Rhode Island to Buffalo, I was thinking, I'm on my way to Cluffalo. <laughs> and, um, <coughs> Ann helped me trademark Fluffalo, so I am branding, branding, branding. Uh, and the thing with, I, you know, okay, personal identity, you know, my name is attached to personal identity. Cluffalo becomes an ambiguous noun, is that a noun? Anyway, that, um, what does that include? Many of the books on the table are from the uh, Cluffalo uh, Seasons Public Painting Workshop Project. Uh, I should explain. Well, once I once I finally you know waited Clu Cluffalo. Once I got to Cluffalo, I um, decided there would be three types of Cluffalos. There would be Cluffalo uh, places, which is represented by the Roycroft Place. There were Cluffalo Seasons, of which there are about two dozen seasons because. I started in autumn of 2015, and I missed uh, spring and summer of 2020. Guess why? And um, we're back in the saddle again. Okay, so let's Cluffalo places, Cluffalo seasons, and Cluffalo numbers. Voila, Cluffalo numbers are done the old-fashioned way, by me alone. And um, so the seasons project. Um, in coming back to Buffalo, there were, there were two things that brought me. One was John McHenry, thank you John, thank you Shelley, gave me free studio space in, uh, at High Temp. And um, that was a lot better 
uh, especially because it's a lot of space, than uh, you know, 10 square feet for a million dollars in New York. Uh, that was a heavy, heavy, heavy weight. The other heavy weight was my mother, who really didn't weigh that much, uh, who was you know, on her way out, and I was her driver. And um, so those are the two things that brought me to Western New York. And due to the fact that, excuse me, that Dorothy, my mother, was a docent at the Roycroft, and she, you know, she hooked up the Turgeon brothers with the Roycroft, and you know, in 1970, and she was buddy buddies with um, Kitty Turgeon, and so she told me that the campus Cor Roycroft Campus Corporation bought the print shop back from Erie County, and I could get a studio there. So Eureka, um, 12 by 13 feet for $220. Nice, um, and 200 footsteps away from where I was staying with Dorothy. And it was also perfect because as a, a national historic landmark, it was a destination. And because I, I, I like to work with other people, I mean, starting with Paul Walls at Ashford Hollow Foundation, um, I actually couldn't function without collaboration. So, uh, and, and, you know, mid-80s, mid uh, when I started using Big Finger to make paintings, you know, and, and, and I know everybody's response. When you, when you make mess art, people say, well, you know, I could do that. My kid could do that. And I, I sort of step up to that challenge and say, absolutely. Bring your kids, bring yourself, come and do it. Chances are you'll make something just as good as what I make. The only difference is you don't get my brand on it. You know, if you can sell your, your, your beautiful painting for a gajillion dollars, I bow to you because, you know, it's always a struggle for me. I mean, I, you know, I went, I had my studio in New York for 20 years and had gallery representation for that chunk of time. And uh, when my last dealer snuck out in the dark of the night um, and I was naked, um, it was like, okay, I'll move my studio to Rhode Island because I'm not getting any action in New York. I mean, I'm pleased that my wife and I have always had an apartment in New York, but Studio Rhode Island, Studio Buffalo, then Studio Roycroft, this works. The thing is with, um, when I started making the Cluffalo Numbers paintings, the first two dozen at John's building, and then at the Roycroft, it's like I started to make this machine out of the components available to me in the Roycroft building. You know, it's like, you know, settling you know, the dog that circles around to figure out how to sit down. Uh, that's what I was doing. I was trying to figure out, well, my tools will be there, my, you know, my books will be here. And, and at, you know, speaking of the books, the, uh, when I started to put my library in, uh, uh, they didn't fit, and I asked Kurt Moranto, the director, hey, you got more space. And he said, well, until we got money to fix a tower, you can put your library into Albert Hubbard's office space in the tower of the print shop, which is an absolutely too cool space. If you haven't been there, come really soon, because guess what? They got the money to fix the tower, and they're going to kick me out. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> if I can make some money to pay them some like crazy high rent, I think I can convince them to let me stay there. Um, the thing about the Roycroft is I've had this sense of an art center as sort of not replacing religious institutions. But as the religious institutions lose their appeal, I think you know art museums, art centers, etc., maybe can take up the the lack that they're in. And um, sort of a miracle uh, in the last three years, uh, Barbara Castilia is memorializing her husband Jerry, who gave me paint for an art project that. Art Park in 1992, the memorialization is that she gave a lot of money to fix what was used to be called Hunter Hall uh, at the Roycroft. 
And so now Hunter Hall has an art center. Roycroft has an art center. And they're, they're, they don't really have their education agenda, you know, ironed out. So this is another place for me to jump into and like, you know, kind of work my way into the picture. And um, I love the idea of intergenerational. Now, education is, you know, uh, as I heard last night, too didactic. I would focus on beauty on the one hand and play on the other hand, and that intergenerationally, everybody can participate in that kind of dialogue. So, um, so the um, the other Cuffalo places. The first one was at uh, Hamburg Library, Jack Baboom, who put up a, a addition to the library building and said he wanted a mural. And luckily, that coincided with Albright and Erie County putting together the public art uh, initiative. And so that's how the, there were 150 people that worked at uh, Hilbert College uh, Auditorium uh, for a full day. And um, the mural is up there. There's a book down there somewhere of the uh, process of the Hamburg project. And then in 2017, uh, Art Omai had me do a residency. Art Omai is a, a sculpture park, 400 acres, and a dedicated museum type building uh, where we uh, did Fluffalo Art Omai. And that was 130 people, including Claire Danes and her husband whose name I forget. Anyway, movie stars, man. I had movie stars. Um, and um, <laughs> when, when, back when Hunter Hall was empty, I put up the uh, Art Omai painting, and I also put up a, a huge painting that I did at Art Park. I, anyway, I like to, if I see blank walls, I like to fill them. And the thing is, when, they when the art center was, came into being, um, they told me I had to take my paintings down. Um, which is a big drag, pain in the, uh, and, um, and then where to put it. So uh, I, was, I was selling the, uh, the 8 by 10s I had a, a thing online, you know, kind of an auction-y thing, and this guy, Mark Sham, Sham, Shammy, 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 got in touch with me, said, yeah, you know, I want to buy one of your pieces. By the way, I'm a museum director, Eureka. <laughs> uh, hey, how would you like a really big painting that was made about 20 miles from your museum? And he said, yes. So the thing is that they took the painting and they actually hung it. I mean, I'm in 70 museums, mostly in their basements, okay? But these guys put it up big time, big whoosh, and And they did this uh, interview with me that I'm very proud of, speaking about my love of New York State and the immigrants and the Native Americans and Hoda Nishoni, um, I got that right. Anyway, so, um, so uh, you know, I pitched this idea of Buffalo Places to other museums, got no response, <coughs> thanks guys. Um, and I wanted to do another one and um, to inaugurate the Castilia Art Center, I asked Kurt if I could uh, do one of these projects on Founders Day, June 5th. And so, um, I, only 42 people came out, but they're all in here, and we made this painting. And now, I said to Kurt, how about if we sell this for the benefit of me, Roy Croft, and Castelia Art Center? And he said, sure. So, <coughs> top bid by Valentine's Day 2023. It's 88 inches tall, that's seven foot, four inches, I think, and 160 feet, no, <laughs> 160 inches across 13 or so feet. It's a nice piece. It's in, it's in five pieces, panels like, like this, these here, and uh, uh, it's a lobby trophy for a bank or a, or, you know, law, law firm or corporate headquarters. corporate headquarters or somebody that's got a nice big wall and wants to spend a lot of money on a really great painting. So, you know, spread the word, get it out there. Uh, Valentine's Day. And, um, but, uh, what good night cover? 
Oh, so uh, <laughs> what you're seeing here is a uh, straight up bald faced sales pitch. I'd like you to all buy something. We got, we got, a, we have every price point. Some really expensive stuff like this. I'll sell you a postcard for a quarter. No, it's Anybody still has, uh, you know, no folding money? You know, bring your quarters over. We'll, you know, we'll set you up. And uh, I'm so grateful for you all to come and listen to me be silly. Oh, is this? I zeroed in on you. That's still going. wrap up with a little bit of housekeeping just to clarify some of uh, Charlie's closing points here. The books on this white table are for sale. Oh, that's mine. Sorry. Uh, okay. Some of them are priced at $20, <laughs> some are at $50. Um, the paintings are all for sale, and you will see a price list on this table as well. Uh, so that's items in this room. Um, just <clears throat> also on behalf of Fitz, we have a really busy schedule ahead. We have a string band in here tomorrow. We have a Halloween party Saturday. We have an art opening the following week. So if you'd like to get on our email list, see Robert at the counter. There's an email sign up. Um, lastly, there's a, a bathroom back through that wall that's accessible 